Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, I'm back at it with another story time this morning. This morning, when I walk my sons and stuff to school, I watch them go to school this morning, I begin to think about some things that uh, just that I'm really, really grateful and thankful for. And I really just begin to reflect, um, not just last night, but today, begin to reflect on the things that you know, that God has done for me throughout my life. The story time today I'm going to share with you is a time that I remember when God helped me fix my car when I was in Germany. Um, I had went to Germany in the early 2000s um, as a young soldier, got there and one of my friends, he uh, helped me get around Germany and different things and such. But he noticed something. He was like, hey, I noticed something. You don't have a car. And I said, no, not yet. I'm saving for one. And um, I didn't bring my car from the States. And he says, well, you know, my wife and I, we have a few vehicles and we have one that we can sell you. So I'm thinking that he was gonna sell me some little, maybe Honda Civic or some little small car. But this guy, when we pull up this house, man, he has a five series BMW, maroon with tan leather interior, man. not leather, but uh, tan uh, color interior, beautiful vehicle. I mean, had the alloy rims. I mean, it had everything. This car was really, really nice, especially for a young soldier. And uh, <clears throat> so we talked prices and things, and it was it was by surprise that he gave me the vehicle for six hundred dollars, and I was so thankful. And uh, mind you, it was a manual, so I, I had previously kind of learned to drive a manual, but I w I wasn't that good at driving a manual. So what I did was I got the vehicle and I had to drive back. I lived about three hours away. So I had to drive, maybe three to four hours away. So I drove all the way back. And in the process of me driving back, you know, I was through trial and error, but I made it back. And uh, I took care of that car, man. I mean, I really kept that car clean. I kept the spark plugs changed, kept the oil changed, anything that went wrong with that car. You know, I kept everything up to date <clears throat> where I needed it to be with that vehicle. But um, one day we went downtown and we were out getting some food. And um, after we got through eating, I, we, I was going by the store because I was still single at the time. So I told my, my, my friends that was with me, I said, well, I'm gonna stop by the store, I'm gonna gas up because we gotta go to church in the morning because they would go to church with me. And I said, uh, so I'm gonna do that. And they said, okay. So I gassed up, make sure everything was good. And I went home and I parked the vehicle. <clears throat> now, you know, thinking everything was okay because when I parked the vehicle, everything was fine. Well, I got up that morning, got everything going, got dressed for church and went out to the car. I and mean, it was a little cloudy that day. Didn't think anything about it, about it because I was getting ready to go to church. I was going to get in the car and, you know, windshield wipers and stuff and not worry about being wet. But I got in the car and lo and behold, turned the key and it did not turn over. So I got out and I fooled around with the cables and different things and such to make sure everything was good. And uh, it would kind of like turn over, but it sounded like it was, you know, wasn't the battery was dying. But I knew the battery was good because I had just purchased that battery a little while ago. So I go through all the details and all the functions that I know because I mean, I'm pretty savvy with vehicles and nothing worked. I'm out there in my church clothes, I'm out there basically soaked because it wasn't raining hard but it was raining hard enough where you know you eventually your clothes get wet so i began to get you know I, I was thinking about it and stuff so i went upstairs and trying to think about and figure out what was going on so i called one of my friend that sold me the car and i said i won't be able to make it to church today i'm trying to get this vehicle fixed he said okay you know do what you got to do so <clears throat> i go and i change my clothes and i put on some work clothes to go back out in the vehicle and I worked on that vehicle and I worked on that vehicle and I worked on that vehicle and nothing was able to be fixed and uh, I had people come out help me with the vehicle try to get their uh, take on it what they think uh, or, or may have thought what was wrong with it and nothing worked and I'm frustrated at this time they can see the frustration I'm frustrated and I'm trying to be calm and I'm like Lord, what is going on? 
So I told him, I said, don't worry about it. I'm tired, I'm frustrated. And it was cold outside that day. Um, anybody that have ever been to Germany, especially Northern Germany, I lived in a place called Baumholder, but I live in the actual city of Eder Oberstein. And it is cold up there. It's actually a place where Hitler trained his troops. We lived in his old barracks there uh, because it was overtaken by the US military after the fact. And uh, we lived there. And so uh, maybe one day you'll hear me do a, a actual story time on that of living in Germany in uh, Adolf Hitler's barracks <laughs> where he trained his troops. But uh, back to the actual topic, I went to my room and I never forget, I have these chairs, these two little small chairs that I had in my room, they remind me of little small recliners, but I would get, every time I had an issue and I would go before the Lord, I would sit in those chairs. I would sit in one of those chairs specifically and I would pray. <clears throat> but this day I was so frustrated. I came in the room and I said, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with this vehicle. I've been trying and I'm cold and I'm wet and I'm hurting. And you know how it is when your hands get cold and you're wet and I'm frustrated and I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on. And I never forget it. I looked up and I said, God, I don't know what's going on, but you got to help me. You made me and you made everybody that made this vehicle. I don't know how to fix it. I need your help. And I said, you got to, I'm, I'm going to sit in this chair and Lord, I believe that you're going to reveal unto me what I need to know about this vehicle and what's going on. And I sit down in that chair and I was so frustrated. Until today, I understand because I, I never really go to sleep during the daytime, but it's like the Lord put me into sleep and I begin to rest. And all of a sudden, it's almost like I was not in a dream, but it was, it was like almost in a vision. But I was walking in this place near the barracks where we lived. <clears throat> and I'll never forget, I seen about six children running in and out of the bushes. They would run out and they would run back in. They would run out and they would run back in. But I noticed it was a woman in the street and she had, if you were from down south or you're probably older, you know what a switch is. When your parents go out there and break one of those little small branches off there to give you to, to to whoop you as we say they may say spanking this day and time but to give you a whooping uh well this woman had a big switch in her hand and the uh the this the funny thing about it is if you look at a switch it's usually straight but this switch was straight for about six or seven inches maybe 10 inches but then it will coil out on the end and so the reason why the children were running because she was hitting them with the switch and it would spin out or coil out and come back. And it would coil out and it would come back. But when the woman turned around, it was my mother. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you hitting these people, children? And you know, she was speaking to me, but it was broken English and I didn't really understand her. And she kept hitting these children and they were trying to get away. And when she did it the last time, I grabbed the switch and I broke it. And she looked at me and she was still speaking like this broken English language. And I know my mother could speak perfect good, perfectly good English, but in, in this vision, she could, she wasn't speaking really good. And she began to chase me. And I ran up this hill by this place. It was called Bosch. It was a, uh, a place where they sold car parts. And I stood there on the hill and she was chasing me. And when she got close, I began to run away and I woke up. And I was still sitting in that chair. And I said, Lord, what was that? I asked you to show me about the car and, and, and I'm frustrated still. And I don't know, and, and I have a, a, a vision or a dream about my mom whoop, beating children. And I was so frustrated still. So I got up, up and I said, well, let me go try this again. And I went to the car and I worked and I was trying some of the same things and I was trying to figure out everything and nothing was working. And I stood there with the hood raised and I was frustrated. And I said, God, I asked you to help me with my vehicle. And, and, and you showed me a dream about my mom and I can't fix this thing. I don't know what's going on. And all of a sudden, as I've heard before in the past, I heard God speak plain as day. And God said, I showed you what to do. And I showed you what was wrong. And it threw me back. And I'm like, I don't know if you've ever heard God speak, but the presence of God, man, is it's powerful. And he, I mean, and it was, it was a still voice that was so profound, you know, but when he began to speak, I began to shut my mouth 
And I knew I was in the presence of the Lord and I began to listen. And when God began to speak, he made it clear to me. And God says, I showed you exactly what was going on. And he says, in the dream that I showed you, you seen your mother and the switch that was coiling out. He says, it wasn't a switch. God says your coil is broke. He said, the six children that you seen was a representation of the spark plugs. He said, the coil is broken and your vehicle's not getting any spark. He said, take the coil out, take it to the place that you seen in the, in the dream, the maintenance place. And he said, the part is there and take it back and put it in your vehicle, the new part, and it'll work. And right then and there, with just standing there in shock and in awe, I know when God speaks, it's time to move. I begin to just shut everything down, take that, uh, take the coil out. I mean, I'm doing it in nervousness. <laughs> I took the coil out and I disconnected all the wires and I got it and I called the place and they said, yeah, we have the part. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. So I went and got the money and stuff and I walked to that same exact place that I seen in the dream. And when I got there, the guy had the part sitting there waiting on me and he was fixing this new cord. And he says, hey, you're probably gonna need this cord also to go along with it. He said, but I'm not gonna charge you, you can have it. He said, just pay me for the coil and you can have this cord. He said, put the brand new coil up in and this brand new cord, cord, with, uh, cord with it. And he said, everything should be good. So I put it in my bag, I walk back down to the place and I go and I put everything together. And I, I got there and I was like, all right, Lord, I know you've spoken and I know um, what it is that you can do. And if you told me this, I know for a fact it's gonna work. But when I put everything up in <laughs> and turned it over, nothing worked. But then it clicked in, it's like God reminded me, your battery was dead before you started. You gotta get a jump off. So I brought somebody, come up, got somebody to jump me off. And lo and behold, one turnover, one turnover, and everything everything was firing on all cylinders. Everything was firing on all cylinders. And I began to praise God and give God thanks right there, you know, trying to be, you know, self-contained, but I began to give God thanks right there. And I began to give God praise for revealing everything that I did not understand as a human. And I knew I was pretty savvy with vehicles. But God revealed it to me. He made everything plain. And I mean, he brought me out of another situation. And so today I'm speaking to you through this um, video and telling you that if you if you would trust God for who he is and understand that God can do anything, just as he worked for me in his situation, in this situation, God can also work for you. But you got to let him do it. So with that being said, that's what I wanted to share with you today. On this Monday morning, you'll be seeing this on Tuesday, but I just thank God, amen, for a reminder of who he is and what he can do. So on this Monday morning or Tuesday, when you see this, you be blessed. And if you trust and believe God and just doing the things of God, trust him for what he can do because God is still awesome. So have a great day, be blessed, and I'll see you on the lives, maybe throughout this week, if not this weekend. God bless, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.